Let's talk about item properties. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, oh, oh right. We find ourselves back in Telegram once more and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about item properties. So item properties are a very interesting system that allows you to, let's say, read from the item stack, the level, the entity. And depending on that, you can then, in theory, change the texture of an item. This is really cool. This is a really cool system. Now, the way that we're going to implement this is that we're going to take the chisel item. So we're going to take the chisel and just change it a tiny bit. So the texture is going to change just a little bit when we actually have something chiseled. So of course, we remember right back to our advanced item. We were able with the chisel item to, let's say, right click each of these blocks and they would then turn into a different block. And later down the line in the custom data component tutorial, we added it so that it would add a data component. And that's basically what we're going to read out. We're going to say, hey, if there is a data component on this, then the actual item property is going to change from you know, one value to another. And that is then going to prompt an item model JSON file to then change to a different texture. That's the highest level overview. So let's see how that is going to work. That is going to work by going to, into the util package and we're going to right click new Java class and that's going to be the mod item properties class. In theory, this can also go into the into its own package or into the item package. I just like to put it into the util package and that's okay. For this, we're going to have a public static void add custom item properties method. Properties method, there you go. And in here, what we're going to do is basically register those item properties. Now, this is super freaking simple. We simply call the item properties class over here that register passing in the item we want to register this, this for, basically, what items that chisel get. And here, a resource location, of course, from namespace and path. This is going to be the name of this particular item property. In our case, we're going to call this used. And then after the first closing parenthesis, a comma, and we're going to start typing in item stack. And you can see we can then use this item property function over here, which allows us to, well, basically now return a floating point number. Now, of course, we could say 1f, but then it would always be 1f, right? The value of this item property would always be the same. Of course, that's not what we want. What we're going to do is we're going to take the item stack from this function right here, and we're going to say if this.get and then mod data component types.coordinates dot get. If that is unequal to null, then we're going to return a 1. And if it is null, then we're going to return a 0. Of course, once again, the get method for the data components is nullable, meaning that if there is no data component of this type on the item stack, then it's going to return a true for null. And otherwise, it's going to basically be a 1. So we're going to be able to change the used item property value depending on the coordinates, whether or not there's a data component on the item stack. Once again, you also have access to the client level, you also have access to the living entity. So you could, in theory, also check the health of the living entity. You can check whether or not the entity is flying, all sorts of things like that. You could check right here and then change the floating point number that you return here, right? It doesn't have to be, obviously, a ternary operator. You can make a whole if statement. You can whole, make a whole function there, a whole method. It doesn't matter. That is, of course, all up to you. So that is the first step. The second step in the is basically taking this and actually calling this down in the tutorial mod class. So this is going to be mod item properties dot add custom item properties. We want to call this in the on client setup event over here, right? At the FML client setup event. If you do not have this, highly recommended to check the description down below in the GitHub repository. You can double check this static class. It has to look exactly like this. You have to have the setup but well, basically exactly like this. It should be per default set up like this. And if you followed the setup uh, tutorial correctly, then you should not have this deleted. But whatever the case may be, it has to be in the client because this is a client only thing. Very important. Now that we have that one done, we then move on to uh, another thing, and that is the asset. So, of course, we're going to have now the, let's say, issue that before the chisel was just normally data gen with the item model provider. This is no longer the case. So we're going to actually comment this out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the generated folder assets uh, models item. And I'm actually going to take the chisel JSON file over here. I'm just going to drag this down because we're actually going to need this. For now, I'm just going to drag this down to the tutorial mod folder. But we're going to now situate this correctly because we actually need to make the JSON files manually here. And you'll see why in a second. So assets tutorial mod right click new directory called models into there another new directory called item 
That is also where the chisel goes. And we're going to refactor it to put into there. And we actually need to change this up a tiny bit. So this chisel one, that's all great and fine. But we also want a secondary one. And that is going to be for the chisel used. So this chisel one is all good. But we also want to drag the same JSON file into the same folder while holding control. We're going to change this to chisel underscore used. And this one is then pointing to a different texture, which is going to be the chisel underscore used texture. We're also going to add this and it's going to be under the item and that's the chisel use. And you will see that this is super freaking like there's base bar barely any difference. You can see it's just a little bit lighter. I just wanted to illustrate the point of item properties, right? This is not the biggest like functional difference. Of course, you can also change the text, right? You can make it like a little bit cracked or something that would all work. But in our case, what I just want to do is I just want to show you like the first steps and then hopefully you can transfer that knowledge and use it for all sorts of really cool things. Now we have this secondary item model JSON file. How are we able to use this? Well, it is actually fairly simple in the normal JSON file, right? So right here, if we're not doing anything, we always show the chisel regardless of the item property. However, now we're going to add an overrides right here. And that basically is an overrides. There you go. And that is a list, right? A list of objects. And this has a predicate. This predicate is going to look for a specific item property. And that item property is going to be tutorial mod colon used. And if that is one, then we're going to choose a different model. And that model is going to be tutorial mod colon item slash chisel underscore used. Now, in theory, this should be fairly self-explanatory, but I'm going to explain it one more time. The idea is that we're always going to use the normal chisel JSON file because that is the name right given for the registration of the item, right? So we're going to use this. However, it's going to say, okay, we're going to use this texture then as well, the chisel texture. However, there is an overrides. If on this item stack, we find a item property called tutorial mod colon used, and instead of a zero, it is a one, which of course happens, right? When we think back, it returns a one when what it happens exactly when the coordinates exist. So after we've right clicked on a block, if that is the case, then I want you to use the other model JSON file called chisel underscore used, which will then use a different texture. Ergo, it's changed the texture when the item property changes. That's the whole idea. That's the idea of item properties and hopefully understandable, packed up in a nicely neat package for you to understand. And crazily enough, that is actually everything we need to do. Now, of course, when it comes to item properties, it goes deeper than this, right? It can go deeper than this. I highly recommend you control left click on this and you can see all of the different, you know, item properties from vanilla. We see things for the, let's actually take a look for the brush, for the bow, for the bundle, for the clock. You can see there's quite a crazy thing here for the clock, right? So there are so many different things here. Highly recommended to check this out as well. It can only benefit you and also just experiment with it, this a little bit, right? It is uh, it is really cool. It is a very cool system and it's actually very well implemented, all things considered. You know, one downside obviously is you'd now have to use the manual JSON files instead of, you know, getting them all modeled over here. But in theory, this shouldn't really be a thing that you use for like, you know, a class or a type of classes or a type of item that you have like 80 different items of. What it would be used for is like a couple of specific special items and that would be that. But with this done, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, finally, back in Minecraft. And as you can see, right now, the chisels are all normal. However, as soon as I use one of them, you can see it has now changed its texture. And you can clearly see that it is a different texture right here. And of course, that has changed because we've now added the mod data component onto it. And you can see that it basically always works only for the item stack where that actually happened for. And this should be persistent because as long as the item stack itself has that data component. It's basically going to, well, change the texture because that's what we have defined via the item properties. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is an example for item properties added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code is available down below. And next time in this video, we'll talk a little bit more about item properties when, when we're adding a custom bow. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.